the spirit of a man to his body is called the silver cord. So when the silver cord is broken, that silver cord that connects a man's spirit to his body is broken, then that man will die. When the silver cord that connects the spirit of a man to his body, then that man will die. You die because there is something that connects your spirit to your body and that thing was broken. As long as that cord is not broken, you are not going to die. You may be sick, there may be diseases, but you are not going to die. But if this disease, this pain, this ailment, this pathology can break that connection, then you will die. So when you read Ecclesiastes chapter 12, from verse 5, Ecclesiastes chapter 12, from verse 5, the preacher says, Also when they shall be afraid of that which is high, and fear shall be in the way, and the almond tree shall flourish, and the grasshopper shall be a burden, and desire shall fall, is and desire shall fail. Because man goeth to his long home, and the mourners go about the streets. So he's talking about here, funeral. He's talking about death. Then he goes on to the next verse to say, Or ever the silver cord be loosed, or ever the silver cord be loosed, or the golden ball be broken. So for a man to die, that golden ball, that silver cord, has to be loosed. That silver cord, which is a spiritual cord, connects your spirit to your body. And when that silver cord is loosed, is broken, that is when your spirit leaves your body, and then you, at that time, you are declared as dead by the doctors and by these medical experts. So he says, or ever the silver cord be loosed, or the golden ball be broken, or the pitcher be broken at the fountain. See, you see how you communicate the fountain. So it's in life. So your spirit gives your body life. So something is broken. What connects the spirit to the body? From where that life flows is broken. So it says that, or the pitcher be broken at the fountain. So it symbolizes like a fountain. When a pitcher is broken at the fountain. Or the wheel broken at the system. In the same way. When you take a human being, a human being is a spirit, he has a soul, but he is in a body. And there is this silver cord that connects the spirit to his soul to the body. And when this silver cord is broken, then the spirit comes out of the body, and this man then becomes physically dead, declared as dead. And from then, the putrefaction and the, the, the decay of his body will take place. That is what happens. This is God's mystery. This is what they cannot know in schools, but this is in the word of God. And this wisdom, he hides it from the world and reveal it to his children. So when you go to a doctor, he will just tell you are dead. But he doesn't know what happened in the spirit to lead to the dead. He didn't know that. It's not when the, all these diseases happening, then at a point in time, then the, the, the man gave his last breath it's when that silver cord was broken and then the man died. For this one, only God can show you. And that is why God tells man, he says, humble yourself. Humble yourself to your God. Because man, you need God. You need God. But men have become proud. The world, they have become proud. And they think that they don't need God. No, you need God. Because you think that all the knowledge you have acquired over the years is enough for them. So they say, we don't need God. We can provide for our problem. No, you cannot. You cannot. And that's why even now that you are getting so much knowledge, that's when even more problems are coming. And that is the mystery behind knowledge because you need God. When you take God out of knowledge, there's decay, there's destruction, there's evil. And that is what man has to understand. So Paul says, knowledge pops up, 
knowledge makes proud. Because when man becomes so much knowledgeable, he thinks that what is there is there a need for God? Is there a need for God? No, you need God. You need God. You need God. The Bible says that in Jesus is all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge. You need God. So he said, or ever the silver cord be loose, or the golden bowl be broken, or the pitcher be broken at the fountain, or the wheel broken at the system. That is when a man will die. Now, what was God's plan? When God created before sin, when God created man, the Bible says that first God formed, when God was creating Adam, he first formed a body, shaped a body. And then he breathed the man that he has created into the body. And the Bible says that man became a living soul. Man became a living soul from that moment. But before this, Adam sinned. How was he supposed to function? Adam was naked. Adam was not wearing anything, but the Bible says that Adam was not ashamed. Adam was not ashamed. Why was not Adam ashamed? Because there are certain mysteries which at the surface, when you read the book of Genesis, you may not see by his death. It takes the Holy Ghost to bring us into that understanding. The man, really physically, you may see him as naked, but he was not naked. God, there was a glory. There was a glory around Adam and Eve. There was a glory around Adam and Eve till they sinned. So when they sinned, they all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. And because of that glory around Adam and Eve, even though the physical eyes, some may think they were naked, they were not really naked. They became naked really after they sinned. That is when the nakedness really happened. So the Bible says that in the, from the physical arena, they were naked, but yet not ashamed. They were not really naked because there was glory around them. There was glory around the man and there was glory around the woman. Why? It is because of why God, how God created man to function. God created man for his spirit to be the master over the body. The body was supposed to be just a tool to reflect the glory and the beauty in your spirit. That was how God created man to function. Your body was supposed to reveal the glory. And this thing will happen. It will, when Jesus comes back, it will happen again. But the body was supposed to reveal that glory. For instance, now that you are a Christian, you are a Christian, you know for glory. There is so much glory in you. Even though you may not know, there is so much glory in you. And that is why Jesus, when he came, there was so much glory in the master. But this body has covered your glory. So on the Mount of Transfiguration, the Bible says that he is, even the glory came out and he shone so much that his, 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 his garment, the very clothes that he was wearing, was brighter even than the sun, was as bright as the sun. Why? Because the glory in his spirit now had come out through his body. That glory didn't come from heaven. It came from within him. It came from within him on the Mount of Holies. But he didn't see that glory like that every day. Even though he was healing people, he didn't see that glory. But one time, they saw the glory really reflecting outwardly. But the glory was inside. That is the same glory in each and every one of us. That is the glory. It is inside. Say, Christ in you, the hope of glory. There is glory in, in the Christian. So man's body was created to reflect the glory. But things change when he sinned. Because after he sinned, that body which was supposed to be a tool, a servant, rather became the master. 
Rather was became the, the dictator, rather was dictating to the man. Rather has put man in bondage because he sinned. But that's not how God created man to be. Now the Bible shows that in Ezekiel chapter 20 that God created Lucifer before he became Satan from stones. And Lucifer was very beautiful when God created him before he became the devil. He created him from stones, precious stones. And the Bible says that that angel was so beautiful called the devil Lucifer. But when also he sinned and fell from glory, then he became ugly and became Satan and the devil. When God created man, even Adam, Adam was even much more beautiful than Lucifer. But then God put man in the body. And that body is what? Enclosed the glory. God said, let us create man in my image and in my likeness. But then he sinned and also he lost that glory. But now we are even really brought to the excellent glory. The true glory itself in Christ. So when you read Proverbs chapter 27 verse 19. How many times you quote this verse people have quoted over the years but they don't really understand what really God was saying here. They use it to apply certain things. And if you, you can see from the translators, how they tra some translated this, this, this uh, verse, they, they, they translate it without a certain understanding, which still is applied. But there was something even more that they didn't get. God, for instance, the Bible says that out of the heart are the issues of life. And that is true. So when you are translating this verse, that scripture really is what brought a limitation to what your understanding of what God really was saying here. So they translated it to mean like that. And still there's an application to that, but even it's much more than that. So when you read Proverbs chapter 27 verse 19, it says, as in water, face and straight to face. The, the King James Version says that as in water, face and straight to face. The Amplifier will say that, other, other version will say face reveals face. For instance, when you stand before a pool of water, you can see your face in that water. So it says that as in water, face reflect face or face reveal face. It says, so the heart of man to man. So he's saying he's saying that the, the hidden the hidden mystery behind it was that man's body was supposed to reveal his heart, the glory and the condition of his heart. And that is why in the spiritual realm, when your eyes are open, you see visions in the spiritual realm. Somebody can be very beautiful physically, but if it's the person demonic in the spiritual realm, she looks so ugly. Because that is true beauty, true, 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 true look, countenance. That is true appearance. This, this body is just enclosing something very ugly, but you will not see. You will not see. But deep, deep down, it's very ugly. And that's why Satan, these demons, they are very ugly, but they can take on a body. And you may think that and come in. That's why Paul says, do not be deceived. Because Satan even is able to transform himself to a minister of life. He can come so beautifully, even though he's so ugly and dark. He's darkness. But he can transform himself and get a certain body and come and present himself as a minister or an angel of light. This dark, very dark Satan. That is how it is. Man, spirit, was to be shown through his body. The same way the master, when he was on Mount Olish, his body was revealing the glory in his spirit. 
So the beauty, there is a hidden beauty in our spirit and we reveal it. But now the degree that, that beauty is the beauty of Christ in your spirit. Now that you're a Christian, that beauty is the beauty of Christ in your spirit. By the degree, there's so many Christians have not been taught. The degree to which you can reveal, the degree of that beauty you reveal is based on your spiritual growth. That day when Jesus returns, though you all, like John says, please let's go to 1 John chapter 3. John says that when he appears, we shall be like him. Light. Light is not the same as same. We shall be like him. For we shall see him as he is, like him. You will be like him because you are the new creature. So you will be like him and also you reveal glory. So we all will be changed. We will all be glorified and we will look like him. Because now, it's like, it's like um, human beings, even the natural man. The natural man has the way he looks. But if you look, you take ten natural men, they don't all look the same. There are some who are dark. There are some who they will call. Some they say white, but you don't say human being who is white. Who will you say yellow or you, you, may, you may give any. You may give that. But they are all human natural men. Some are, are black. Some look different shades. In the same way, we have the new creature. He's a different species, a different creature. But this creature also can have different reflection of glory. It's the same glory of Christ, but the degree to which you reveal, the degree, the amount, the quantum of glory you reveal on that day will be how much growth did you achieve while living on this earth. So some of them, they are not being taught and you look at, they are deceiving and say, living anyhow. They don't understand Christianity. So they, they think that when Jesus comes, then we all will be exactly in glory. No, that is why the Bible, Daniel says that some even you know, will shine like the stars. And Paul talks about the Bible talks about garments, different garments in the prophets. The prophets talk about different garments. There are different garments, clothing of glories. Paul talks about different crowns, crowns of righteousness, different crowns. And all these is the glory that we will be revealing. The glory of Christ. But the question is how much Christ? How much glory of Christ, of that glory, will you reveal that day when the Son of Man? Descent. How much of that glory? How much of that glory? Now in your spirit is full and complete because Christ in totality has come to dwell in you. But how much of this glory is has can be reflected through your soul? Because the soul is the medium through which that glory is reflected. It passes through your soul. And you can reveal as much glory based on the development of your soul. And that development of your soul is not by just virtue of knowledge, spiritual knowledge. No. It's also by virtue of how much you have worked in that knowledge. How much righteousness have you worked in righteousness? How much? To what degree have you worked in righteousness? So John says, Beloved, now are we the sons of God, and it do not yet appear what we shall be. But we know that when he shall appear, we shall be like him. He says the same, like him. Like. You can say that this person looks like this, but that means that they look exactly the same. They look alike. Say that we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. So you will see him as he is. And you will look like him because he's the new creature. And you'll be like you also would be translated, transfigured to be like a new creature. But he is the highest level of glory when it comes to the new creature. But his glory is in your spirit. But how much of that glory can you reveal to reflect in your body? That is what God is asking his children. That's why he says that, behold, I'm coming with my reward to give to every man according to his works. So when Christians are not taught these things, some are, you see Christians, they are joking with the things of the kingdom. Christians, and some live as if they don't know why they are here, living anyhow. They don't know who the Christian is because they are not being trained and taught. They think Christianity, you are here because of the things of this world. They have not understood Christianity. They have not understood who the Christian is. 
that there's a work to be done. You are here for soul development, and you are here also to do a work for the master. So you are joking, but you will come. You will come. But those who take seriously and understand these things, and they will live how their Lord wants them to live, and they will work for Him and do the work when He comes to be glorified in His sins. He will surely reward those ones. He will surely reward them. He will surely do that. And that is why, as a Christian, don't look at like at someone. The Bible says that they will all bear our burden. If they will not do their work, you do it. If you are not do, if if you are the only person in the church who will do their work, do it. If every person you will not do it, you do it. Don't look like at those people and say, no, you do it because you know why you are here. You are on a course. You are on a journey. You know why you are here. You do it. You commit it and you walk with him. Those who joke with life and they will go after the things of this world. Let them go after it. But you are serious. You know why you are here. You know your destiny. You know what is coming. You know, you know what is in their future. So that is where your focus and your gaze is on. So there are garments, there are garments, there are garments in our spirit, and these garments, really when they come, these garments will come up on our body. That is why in Revelation you talk about garments, garments prepared for his righteous ones, they are garments. Now, the Lord Jesus, when we go to Revelation chapter 1, John the Apostle, John the Beloved, had been with Jesus for three years. In the Master's ministry, John has been with Jesus. And this John was so close to Jesus that even during the communion before the Passover, the feast of Passover, this John, the Bible says he inclined, reclined his body, his head, on the breast of the master during the Passover. So it shows the closeness of this apostle to his Lord. But this same John, when he met Jesus in his glory, let's observe what John says in Revelation chapter 1. But this glory that John saw, where was it coming from? But this was a glory that Jesus was coming from Jesus, the inside of Jesus, out, out. It was inside, out. Because the Bible says, Colossians says that in him dwell the fullness of the Godhead bodily. So what John was seeing outwardly was just an emanation of what was within the master, the glory, the glory of the Father within the master. And then it was coming, being reflected in his body, and John saw it. So when you, you start from the verse 9, he says that I, John, who also am your brother and companion in tribulation and in the kingdom of and patience of Jesus Christ, was in the island that is called Patmos for the word of God and for the testimony of Jesus Christ. John says, I was in the spirit on the Lord's day and heard behind me a great voice as of a trumpet saying, I am Alpha and Omega, the first and the last. And what thou seest, write in a book and send it unto the seven churches which are in Asia, unto Ephesus, and unto Smyrna, and unto Pergamos, and unto Tytara, and unto Sardis, and unto Philadelphia, and unto Laodicea. And John says, And I turned to see the voice that spake with me. And being turned, I saw seven golden sticks, seven golden candlesticks. And in the midst, of the seven candlesticks, John says, one like unto the Son of Man, clothed with a garment. He was clothed with a garment of glory, clothed with a garment down to the feet, to the foot, and get about the paps with a golden girdle. 
Now, just like when you saw the master, there was normally the priest in the Old Testament, they would have a gather a belt around their hip, around their loins. But when you saw Jesus, it was different. Jesus' own belt was fastened around the breast side of the Lord. So it was something like here, the breast side, instead of a belt which was on, on the hips, it's on the paps, on the breast side of the Lord, the golden, again, a belt overlaid with gold. That is why John saw. And when you please, you come here back here, let's go to Ephesians chapter 6 from verse 10. Ephesians chapter 6 from verse 10. Why does this ghetto, this interest, but this ghetto me typify what? Typify knowledge of truth. That ghetto is symbolic of truth. Knowledge of truth. Truth. And the priest in the Old Testament, they will have this belt called the clothing of the priest that had many things and all each of the symbols had a meaning. And by they had the belt that gathered on their hips. But for only for Jesus, when John saw the master, it was not on the hips, but on his breast side. So it's John, Paul, like here, Paul says, Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God, that ye may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For he rests not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this age, of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Since wherefore take unto you the whole armor of God, that ye may be able to withstand in the evil day. And having done all to stand. So here he helps us to understand the evil day, whether you like it or not, it will come. Like Jesus said, in this life you shall have troubles. So he said that the evil day will come. So as a Christian, it's not you pray that for that I don't want any evil day in this life. No, evil days will come. But all it tells you always be prepared. So that when the evil day, the day that your evil day comes, you will be able to stand. Many Christians, they don't prepare. And that's when the evil day comes, it destroys them. Because God didn't say that there will be evil days. He says that once you are in this life, there will be evil days. That's why Paul says, having done all that, so that you shall be able to withstand in the evil day. The evil day will come, but you have the armor. The problem is not the evil day. So when that evil day comes and destroys Christians, that tells you why they were not prepared. So the evil day of sickness comes and he dies. The evil day of cancer comes, he dies. He was not prepared. But if you had the armor, if you had prepared us, put on the whole armor. If you had everything, then that man or woman could have been stood in the evil day. He said, having done all to stand, please next verse. Then he says, stand therefore, having your hips, your loins, get about. So it's the same thing is said here. So a get, like a get, a belt, loins get about with truth. So it was, that belt was symbolic of truth. And the priests will have, will have it. And they are God. Why? Because God said that for the priests, he, he told the people, the, the, the Jews, he said, seek for the knowledge of the truth in the mouth of the priest. And that is why the priests have this belt of truth around and symbolic of truth, that they had truth to speak to the people, the Levitical priest. But when he came to Jesus, we can now go to, back to the Revelation. When he came to Jesus, this same belt, interestingly, was not on his hips. For the master, it was on his breast side. That is interesting. And in the midst of the seven candles, the one like unto the Son of Man, clothed with a garment down to the foot, and get about the, about the paps with a golden girdle. Please, next verse. Then he says, His head and his hairs were white like wool. Now, many times, many people, when they read here, their focus rather is on the hair, but it is only the hairs. Even the hair, think about it. The hair was emanating with so much brightness of whiteness. The head of the master himself, the head was white. Not only the hairs, the head and the hairs. We can, we can just picture it. 
no wonder he told these Jewish leaders that you will see the Son of Man coming down with great power and great glory. Wow, the day Jesus will descend. We cannot, we should just wait and see what we will see. Because it will be amazing. But this is, this what, if he saw what he saw, it, 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 it is what he could just describe with words, but you could see that it's something indescribable. He said his head and his heads were white like wool and as white as snow. Brothers, we have seen snow. How white snow is. He said he saw a man, a man figure, that the head of that man was white as snow. And his eyes were as a flame of fire. This was the same Jesus that John was working with for three years. This was the same Jesus that John said, that which we have seen, we have heard, we have touched. And our hands have held of the word of life. Says so John said, we touched him. We ate with him. We saw him. John walked with him for three years. Now he sees the same Jesus in glory. Now the master was in his glory. And John says, when I saw him, his head and his hands were white like wool, as white as snow, and his eyes were as a flame of fire. Please, next verse. Then he says, and his feet like unto fine brass. Now, fine brass is not the same as brass. Fine brass is more, more whitened than brass. So he says that the master's feet was, was like fine brass with a luster, brightness, or whiteness of brass, as if they bent in a furnace, and his voice as the sound of many waters. And he had in his right hand seven stars, and out of his mouth went a sharp two-edged sword. Says, out of his mouth went a sharp two-edged sword. That is the word of God. The word of God. So the word of God too is a sharp two-edged sword. No wonder in Hebrews he says that a sharper. The word of a sharper than any two-edged sword. But right? the word of God itself is a two-edged sword. So among all the two-edged sword, the sharpest is the word of God. He says, and he had in his right hand seven stars, and out of his mouth went a sharp two-edged sword. He says, and his countenance was as the sun shining in his strength, in his power. Then John goes on to say, he says, and when I saw him, John said, I fell at his feet as dead. John has been walking with Jesus all these years, all the three years. He never fell. But when he saw the Lord Jesus, the resurrected Jesus, who had ascended to the throne of power and now was in glory, when he saw the vision of the master, John said, when I saw him, I fell at his feet as dead. Then he said, and he laid his right hand upon me, saying unto me, Fear not, I am the first and the last. What a statement. It says, fear not, I am the first and the last. I am he that lived and was dead. And behold, see, I am alive. I am alive forevermore. Why does it see? I am alive forevermore. Say, now you can see. You can see me, John. Now you can see me. You can see me that I am now full of life because he is life. He is eternal life. And when that life which was in the spirit was revealed in his fullness, everything about the master changed. His eyes with a flame of fire. The head and the, and the hairs white as snow and wool. The feet was burning like fine brass when eternal life was fully manifested through the body. In his fullness. So he told his servant John, See, as you can see, behold, I am alive. You can see, I'm full of life. I am alive forevermore. Amen. And I have the keys 
of hell and of death. That is how man was created to be. Man too was created for the body to reveal the beauty in his spirit. But man fell. And that is why now those who have become so conscious of the senses and of the body, they are not doing anything for God because nothing, the glory, they cannot reveal and manifest so much graces and glory of this life. But there's so much graces and glory for us to manifest and to reveal. All hidden in our spirits. It's all there. But those who are carnally minded, they cannot. That's why a pastor can be so ignorant when it comes to spiritual knowledge. Why? Because he doesn't have time for the spirit, for the Holy Ghost, for the things of the spirit. But it's not supposed to be so. Because there's so much goodies in our spirit for this body to reflect. This body is supposed to be the tool to manifest, to manifest that glory within us. That glory within us. So we will end here. We will end here and next week we will go more in depth to look at what is in your spirit. What is in your soul? How are you supposed to live according to the Spirit? And how will you bring these glories even out? Throughout this series, we God will show us so many deep things. But there are so many deep things that we will learn about in this series. Of the spiritual man. Who this spiritual man is. Who this spiritual man is. Unto the Lord.